I'm not kidding when I say don't buy an 1800X and probably not even a 1700X too. Now first of all, thank you to AMD for sending over this CPU. I'm also going to be testing it against the 1800X that they also sent over, so this should be very interesting. Let's take a look. Let's start off with the specs. First of all, this is basically the same as the Ryzen 7 1800X, with the only main difference being the clock speed. This one is a 3GHz base with a boost to 3.7. You also, because it's a non-X version, have a relatively small XFR range, which for me really wasn't that high. I think it was somewhere between 50 to 100 megahertz here. So effectively, you can have core one running at around about 3.8 gigahertz, whereas the rest of the cores will all be boosting to somewhere above 3 gigahertz, but no more than 3.7. The rest of the specs are basically the same here, except for this chip runs at 65 watt TDP as opposed to the 95 watts for the 1700X and the 1800X. This one still has eight core 16 threads using SMT. We still do have that window scheduler bug at the moment as well, so that is something to be aware of when it comes to performance numbers. But either way, as I said, still got four megabytes of L2 and 60 megabytes of L3 cache. Still has 24 PCIe lanes, although this one is running at, I think, 320 pounds uh, and somewhere around the same in dollar numbers. So a very impressive chip for the price. Now, the reason I say don't bother getting an 1800X and pick up one of these instead is that the 1800X, at least my chip anyway, will overclock to 4.1 gigahertz at 1.45 volts. At the same voltage, my 1700 non-X will overclock to 4 gigahertz dead, which is actually really impressive and means that for like $180 pounds less, you're getting 99% of the performance of the 1800X and of course getting it at a way cheaper price point. Now of course, if you don't want to overclock your chip, then you know feel free to get a 1700X or an 1800X, whatever suits your application and your budget. But if you do, you know, if you don't mind throwing in a couple of minutes to overclock one of these chips, and it really is just a couple minutes, then you can get to 3.8, 3.9, 4 gigahertz on these chips and basically get the same performance for, uh, well, a lot less money. So the main thing you're here for is the performance, and as I said, I'm doing overclocking results in this video, which is awesome, so let's take a look. So as you can see, in Cinebench, it does a pretty good job, especially when it's overclocked. In fact, actually, when overclocked to 4 gigahertz, actually beats the 1600K in both multi and single threaded. It's still not quite the same as the 7700K in single threaded, though, even when overclocked. In Asus Rulebench, again, it just runs away with it here, especially when it's overclocked. Now, an interesting thing, as you'll see in the spread in a second is that this actually when overclocked beat the uh, 1800X when also overclocked so something quite interesting going on there. Now in 3D Mark again still not quite as good as the 7700K when it comes to the sort of gaming results uh, at this point in time this is the 1080p run of Fire Strike but still very impressive and very close on visit score to the 1600K when overclocked to 4 gigahertz. In GTA 5 there still wasn't a massive improvement here I think there's still a lot of optimization that needs to happen to make this a viable uh, you know, comparison at 1080p, but it is an interesting thing to look at nonetheless. In Dirt Rally, we're seeing basically the same results as the 1800X, although at stock frequencies, it was a couple of FPS shy of the 1800X also stock run, although overclocked to 4 gigahertz, you're still seeing that 117 FPS. Taking a look at the full results spreadsheet that you can find in the links down below, it's actually really impressive. Now, at stock frequencies, as you'd expect, it's a little bit slower than the 1800X. With the SMT disabled, besides Doom being the outlier where the performance went up, we saw performance go down in almost all of the tests here, and my 4 GHz overclock showed that it's still a really impressive chip and can basically run at the same speed as the 1800X. Comparing it to the 7700K with a 1070, again at 1080p there's a fairly big difference, but once you get up to 4K and 1440p there really isn't much difference here. The other thing to mention is that the temperatures, especially when overclocked, to 4 gigahertz, we're in the area of 67 degrees, that's with an Acasa Venom A20, a 240mm liquid cooler, so that's really overall impressive temperatures. So as you've seen, the performance and value for money in these chips are absolutely incredible, I cannot uh, recommend them enough. If you are planning on buying one of these, do bear in mind that this is still the first week of Ryzen CPUs really being out in the world, so we still have the Windows scheduler bug, there's no game optimizations, and there's still a lot of BIOS updates that need to happen before we get 
get some really true uh, a true idea of the performance that these ships actually have so it's going to be very interesting to see but either way I am ludicrously impressed with this uh, and if you are planning on gaming and especially if you're planning on sort of future proofing your system then for me I think this will outlast the 7700k uh, in the long run even at 10 ECP especially when it comes to future games or supporting DX12 and Vulcan so very impressive and even if it isn't quite beating a 7700k at this point in time I think in a few months time when we have some optimizations the Windows scheduler bug fix and some BIOS updates it might get a lot lot closer so I think in terms of scoring I have to give it a 5 for everything it really is a fantastic chip I mean you're basically especially when you overclock this to 4 gigahertz you are comparing this to Intel 6900k which again is still a thousand dollar CPU and this is what three hundred and fifty dollars so you're looking at almost a third of the cost for basically the same performance especially when you overclock it so again a ridiculously impressive chip and I'm really just very happy that AMD is back in the playing field and I'm also looking forward to seeing the Ryzen 5 CPUs also I do want to make it clear that I did try disabling the cores here and all it did was drop FPS I also tried disabling SMT which I included in my full spreadsheet and again that mostly just kept the performance the same didn't really see any increases there specifically so that is something to be aware of if you enjoyed the video and you want to check one of these chips out I'll leave a couple of links in the description down below It'd be awesome if you could check those out and use those links when you're buying the Ryzen 7 CPUs if you're buying anything else as well whether that's just different CPUs different motherboards or anything else if you use the Overclockers UK and Amazon affiliate links in the description down below it genuinely helps me out it supports the channel keeps the lights on and all that sort of stuff so if you use those that would be fantastic otherwise feel free to subscribe and like and leave a comment if you enjoyed the video of course feel free to share the video as well if you did enjoy it found it useful and informative it's the best thing you can do to help any YouTube channel out so if you could do that that'd be fantastic and otherwise that's pretty much it so I'm going to leave some videos over here for you and the subscribe button over this side and otherwise uh, yeah thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video